I know there are people today are talking about abundantly. When the Lord said having life abundantly, what was he talking about? But eternal life. Right? And people today are preaching with this prosperity doctrine about that abundant life means having a lot of possessions. I mean, and as I said to you before, right, if you are that foolish to think that, right, does your possessions make you have abundant life? Does it make you live any longer? In fact, most of, many of those people have traded their life for less because now they have given the devil control over their lives. And the devil will say, like, I need that one sacrifice today and that one sacrifice tomorrow. And he really doesn't care. You could have served him as faithful as you want. You say, I sacrifice that one. So that would tell him about a sacrificial lamb, right? And you have all of these things and you have all this. It doesn't make you have any more life than anybody else. I mean, come on, it's almost like a vote, right? When you go to vote, because you're big, or you are the general, or you have a, do you have a vote more than the poorest man? No! Because the vote does not go by that. The vote does not go by your status, so you are the vote goes by that. You are one life. One human being. So abundant life has nothing to do with that. So abundantly, you say, I've come. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. That is to say, you have abundant life, which is eternal life. So whoever came up with this idea about saying that the abundant things, he never said abundance of things, he said abundant life. Right? Because right now we have a limited life. Okay? Limited. Limited. It might be 25 years, it could be 50 years, it could be 100 years, but it's limited. Okay? So he said, the thief, go back to what I was talking about, and, and, and he said, the thief cometh not, but for steal and to steal and to destroy. So David said, I'm going to hide the word inside of me. Right? So I'll be able, when he say, I shall not sin against you, which means I will not listen to the voice of the devil, right, and displease you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so in Luke, in Luke, oh no, this is Luke, let me go to Luke. It was in Luke chapter 8. In scripture said, speaking of this very same parable, um, <coughs> excuse me. It said, where are we? Let me look up my phone. It's cancelled out here. The scripture we're looking at was Luke, Luke 8, right? Verses 5 to 15. And the scripture said, um, Then came to him his disciples. Mm -mm, no, no, no. Okay, so verse 11, the power, the seed is the word. Well, by the way, said I they that here then cometh the devil and, 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 and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And so it is, I would say here, not because you're in church and you're both baptized and you might even minister, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make the devil couldn't care less. He will snatch away that word from you, okay? Because we need the word every day, just like we need food, okay? So not because you're in church. I mean, I, that's why I used to look at it. So, well, of course, uh, if you're saved, then of course your word is uh, on good ground because you got into the church and you gave it, say, give your life to the Lord. No, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything to the devil, okay? See, you're born again, doesn't mean anything, okay? Because he knows that he's going to attack you and attack you and attack you. And the scripture said, it, they, it taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Right? And then comes down to the bottom, where it said there, verse 15, But they on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Right? They are the good word. He said they have heard the word. And notice the Bible said, they bring forth fruit, 100-fold, 30-fold, 60-fold. And you wonder, 
What kind of fruit are you talking about? But you already talk about you. A good heart. You talk about being obedient. That's why they keep the word and they bring forth fruit with patience. And you better understand that you need patience in order to serve God. You need patience for any fruit to bear. Because if you're careless, you could lose the fruit. Right? You know, in some places, for example, um, I think um, they have the banana, and they, they would actually go there and put a plastic bag over that thing to protect it because they said the sun might burn it. And if the fruit get tarnish they will they might be able to sell it yes but they won't get that much for it okay so and it, it and so sometimes at certain stages they go and they spray the um the, the thing because there are pests coming at it and these pests are worms whatever if you want to eat up the fruit right yes and you know this thing they have a scarecrow right they put up a thing like look like a man to scare away the crows, because when the fruit starts to bear, the crows, they smell it. And they come over and they say, well, they eat it up. Right? They eat it up. You know, you ever pick a mango and you see the birds were eating it. Right? You just grain. They were eating it. Right? So, it, 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 you, you have to protect the word. You have to protect the fruit. The birds are out there. The devil's are out there. Right? The parasites are out here seeking to destroy the fruit. Because the word will bring forth the fruit. Right? Right? And why don't we look at that fruit? Right? Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, right? And it says here, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now one of the things the Bible talks about the fruit is long suffering. At one time they were doing a study at church, and they said they were doing a study about the fruit of the spirit. And when I looked through the whole thing, there was nothing about long suffering. So I went to the pastor and I said to him, how come they're doing a study here about the fruit of the Spirit and there's nothing about long-suffering? And he was shocked. He said, what? There was nothing about long-suffering in this? I said, no. I said, look at this. Right? And that was the book that came down from, from the, the, the convention but for them to study. They changed it to something else. Because people don't want to suffer for anything now. Right? And the songs about Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. There's a cross for me and a cross for you. A cross, right? And, and, and you talk about one day you lay down your cross for a crown. People don't want to bear anything nowadays. Nothing. They don't want to bear anything. So they come with a new Bible that takes out long suffering out of it. Right? Not the Bible anyone said just suffering enough. It's a long suffering because sometimes some of these things they take long and sometimes they're really hard to deal with. They're really hard to deal with. Right? I had something of a problem, I was suffering with it for 10 years. And so when I think about it, I said, My God, I give God thanks for breaking the yoke of the devil for 10 years. And people would see me and really don't know. Unless I tell them. And some people, of course, be more like, like, they're almost like in disbelief, what I'm saying. But they say, he who feels it knows it. Yes, he who feels it knows it. Right? And when you have your testimony, what you go to, no man can tell you that something already didn't happen. Because I'm to you. Why, why do I really even care if you want to believe me? I said, so don't matter tell them anything. Because sometimes you tell them, it's actually like they never use them to make you feel worse than you were even feeling before. So don't matter tell them anything. Let them think what they want. 
Let's take it to the light and pray. Right? Sometimes you can't even find a good friend to talk to. Because they're looking at like, what is he saying? If something like that really could happen. Right? And some people are also like say like somebody like me, they expect, well really, everything would I would be, you know, I mean, oh this guy pray for people to heal, he pray for them, yeah, I'm in castle of devils and, and all these things he's doing. I mean, how could he be dealing with something like that? Yeah, I would deal with it. Right? The type of policy would deal with that time in the flesh. Right? It wasn't something to humble me really, I had nothing but it, it let me walk close to God. And what I'm saying to you is that there is long suffering. Long suffering. Right? Suffer. And the Bible said, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. And if we deny him, he will deny us. Is that what it says? The scripture said, um, yes, if we suffer with him, we shall our um, look at Second Timothy chapter two. It says here, verse 13, verse 11. Um, let me just read from verse 7. Paul said, Wherefore I suffer trouble. What he said? He said, I suffer trouble as an evil door, even unto bonds. But he said, The word of God is not bound. He get to the point where he went up in prison because of the word. He suffered trouble. That's what he was dealing with. Right? I heard somebody say one time that if you go to prison, you are cursed. Oh, you curse. John the Baptist, they, they beheaded him in prison. Right? So why, he's he gone to hell? Right? And the scripture said, the so Paul said, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus unto eternal glory. And he said, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Hallelujah. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Hallelujah. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And then he said finally, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So you know I believe it. That's your problem. Okay, because the Lord is not going to reverse it. That's right. Okay, these people don't want to hear it this way. So let me just flip it over. And he's not going to change it for you. All right? He's not going to change it for you. You have to take it the way it is given, right? If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. So these people come now with a new version of the Bible. And you have people who are in the same church, same people who are supposed to believe like myself, and they, they take it out, right? Say so they're no longer suffering because they don't want to, they don't want to suffer for Christ's sake, right? As Paul said, he said some of them, they didn't want to suffer, right? He said there, they, um, they, they, they said, lest they should suffer for the cross of Christ. They don't want to suffer for the cross of Christ. They want to make it say that everything is just going to go smooth. And abundant means you're just going to have abundance of things in this world. Where in the Bible you see such things? Those are lies from hell, from the devil. As I read the scripture, the scripture said you shall have life more abundantly. It never said you have things more abundantly. And things in this world cannot make you have anything, any more life than you, you have. It can make you feel better about life, but it's not going to make your life more abundant. So, I mean, if, 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 I, if a man is sitting outside on the street, right, and he's begging, right, he's, he's alive, okay? As I said, he has a vote, just like you, right? He's alive. And if you're sitting on a sofa, you're alive. But that doesn't mean you're going to live longer than him. Because I've seen people sometimes out in those coal and living in those... And I said to myself, Lord of mercy, how oh, these people deal with this kind of thing? Because if I had to deal with it, I'd be dead. I'd be, I don't know. Right? They eat the food that I may find on the street and it doesn't do them anything. Right? They, they, they live out there with the one... I mean, I was in Montreal and I saw the man out there begging. He wrapped up with... Um, with all his wool, he put coat, whatever, and he put something on the floor, and he sit down, and the temperature is sub-freezing, right? I mean, cold and in New York. And I'm saying to myself, Lord of mercy, how does he do that? How does he do that? It come like he had more life than me, as if so many kids. Because I couldn't do it, right? I put on my 
cold and everything and I don't want to be outside for that long. Right? And I'm used to the cold. But he's out there. Right? So what makes you think you have more life than him? Right? It has absolutely nothing to do with the things you have. Okay? Because don't you think, in fact, you might even know him live out your days. Because people are so lazy today now, where we used to get up and turn on the TV, everything is a remote. Oh, uh, what do you call it? Alexa? Alexa, I want this. Alexa, Alexa. I don't know what Alexa is. It could be an evil spirit for that matter you're talking to. Right? Uh, I want this and I want this. You can't even get up to go and do anything whatsoever. Because all you're just trying to say to yourself, well, I don't want to get up. I, re I go and I want food. I didn't want to get out of the car. So I, dr I, I drive through. Right? I drive through. So I don't even have to get out of the vehicle. And you try your best not to even move your body. Not knowing they're damaged in your life. And then you are likely not to live long. Okay? So you have nothing to get gain. Okay? You have nothing to gain. Right? So that's what happens. When you get more comfortable, and you get too comfortable, that's when you really might don't live as long as you should. Have a heart attack, bam! Just like that. Okay? I know that man a years ago, you had a heart attack right over his desk. Doctor tell him, slow down, man, slow down, you're going too fast. But he has his business and his mind, he's making money and all of that. And he's all he's preoccupied with that. So the heart attack hit him right at his desk. Slump over, dead. Right? What happened? Did the amount of things he had could have saved him that day when he, when he was at his death? Nothing. It did nothing for him. Right. Nothing for him. Okay? So here we are. We are at the point where the scripture said, the fruit of the Spirit. And this is what we need to bear. The fruit of the Spirit. And that's what the Lord wants to come out of us. Constantly. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Not fruits, no, but the fruit. Right? All of these things are in the fruit that come forth when our seed is on good ground. And may God help us right, to make the decision for good ground. Decide on good ground. Okay? You know, I, 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 I've seen many guys when I was growing up, even before I could play music, I noticed whenever the music is playing, they're, they're at it, man, and whatever it is. But as soon as the music starts playing, they go inside and chat. And I used to say to myself, why do they do that? You know? So at the time when the tribulation, I mean any persecution, any temptation come, they have no strength. It's gone. Because they didn't take the word. The word, as I said, choose good ground. It's a choice you make. It's a choice we make. What we want to do with the word. And as Moses told the children of Israel, he said, I set before you two ways, life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose the life. Today the word of God is saying, choose the, choose the um, deep ground. Choose good ground. Choose deep, good ground. Choose it. Because the seed is the word. And it's up to us what we want to do with the word. Notice the scripture said, it said the heart, the three things, the eyes and the ears. So the heart is what's gross. Children use the term today, what's, something is gross, right? Anyway, the heart is messed up, right? The eyes, instead of opening them and just see what God is saying, they close the ear, they close them. And then there's another set, instead of their ears, as people say, go through one ear and come to the other. Right? They, they close. The scripture said, and the reason why they're doing it is because they don't want to change, right? They don't want to change because the Word of God changes us every day. Not just today, but every day. As the scripture said, we are changed looking into the, um, um, this, this, the, the mirror of God. We are changed from glory to glory, right? Glory to glory, going closer like Jacob's ladder, up and up into the throne of God. And the scripture said, they are, they said scripture, by hearing, these people had what goes, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes are their clothes, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, 
and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Right? So this is what is going on. And the devil is saying, okay, um, let them stay right there. Let them stay right there. And how did he do it? He snatched away the word because it was on the surface. Right? What we said. Right? And he, when the word started to go, he don't be able to go and look away underground. He give them some per persecution and thing that make them turn away. Right? And sometimes they say, well, okay, well, uh, the word can go a little more, but of course, I have some tons there that are going to go around it. And when the tons go, it cluster it. And it can't bring out a food and a fruit. So it at least start to grow. In the first case, it didn't grow at all because it was left on top. The second case started to grow. Didn't get very far. The third case, it could have gone further, right? But he had something up on the top to smother it and to kill it, okay? So it's up to us where we want the word to be, what we want to do with the word. And I'm just saying, like, really, why, why God would do that? Yes, God made that, would do that. Somebody sent me a question um, this week, asked me about, like, I almost want to say with that God, like, um, Pastor, why is it that God will make this coronavirus come? And I, I, just, I just told her, I said, don't you ever say nothing to, about like that. Because God had nothing to do with coronavirus. Okay, this is a, a curse from the devil. I had nothing to do with it. Okay, I had nothing to do with it. So man had made a decision what he wanted to do. Right, when the 9 11 um, came and, 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 and my manager was saying, like, why would God allow something like this to happen? But God had nothing to do with it. What did God have to do with it? When they had their meetings that Monday morning with all those business here, you think they even had a prayer that morning? Did they ask God to come in and ask his decision about anything? Did they ask him anything? I guarantee they didn't. Okay? So when the plane fly, flew, flew inside, you think they, they were concentrating on God? You think they were, their minds were in heaven? Or they were... You know, what, what, what do you think was going on? You think it was something... So, so, I mean, because if you are depending on God for deliverance, and God will stand up for you. But you couldn't care less about God, what did you expect? You never ask him to come into a meeting. You didn't ask him to do anything. So what has to do with God? You, you said you can't handle the matter yourself, right? And I told you about the, 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 the car where they were driving and the man said, take Jesus with you. They said, no, they have no space for Jesus. You have to go in the trunk. Right? So when the car crashed, if Jesus was in the car with them, then they could get delivered. But they said, all they can do is put him in the trunk. So all of the trunk they found intact. With the eggs in it, right? I'm saying to you, you have to put a minute into it. One song said you must seek God in the morning if you want him through the day. And a lot of people are looking for God in the day. But did you did you ask him to take you in the morning? Did you put him in in the in 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 the in, in, in the front seat? In the driver's seat? Right? So how you I expect? Did you put him in the driver's seat and tell him you want him to drive this vehicle? Are you tell him in the back seat, I put him at the passenger and said, watch me, right? Watch me what I'm doing. Did you ask him to do that? So, so when things happen, you know, we turn and say, well, why did God allow? Why did God allow what? God is doing as much as you're asking him to do, and even more. But don't expect, as I said to you, when the seed comes, if you leave that seed on top there, you're talking about God. But devils are there waiting to take it away. Devils are there waiting to take it over. And that's the problem. You see? That's the problem. So even though God will give you a chance, listen to me. Satan not giving you a chance. And he's not going to give you a chance to recover either. Alright? Because he want to send you down to hell with himself. Okay? So, you're talking about, so in time when people are supposed to say, why the devil do this? Like, the woman should be asking me the question, like, why did oh Satan... Um, do this one, so she asked me, why did God? What did God have to do with it? Right? The Lord will give you a chance, you know. Yeah, you give you a chance, but see, they're not giving you a chance. No. I'm giving you a chance. Okay? Alright, so may God help us today that we hide the word inside our hearts. A devil can't steal it away from us. That will bring forth fruit to his glory, 
and to his kingdom. The seed is the word. The seed is the word. Okay? Those who bring forth fruit with an honest and a good heart, they keep the word and they bring it forth with patience. Amen? May God help us. So tell you. Um, hand me that mouse, please. Uh, may God help us to the things. So they pray it's good and it's mercy and us. We're going to sing and we're going to pray. There's a song that says, My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. I want us to sing that song. My Jesus. Let us sing the song first. Thank you. 